I really like this box that the game Masquerade comes in. It's just big enough to hold the cards and the instructions that come with the game, and it's rather sturdy. I carry it around with me a lot. This game comes in other sizes of boxes, but this size is the best. If you open it, you see that there are the rules which you can unfold to discover everything you need to know to play Masquerade on one sheet folded up. You will also discover cards of different types. Cards that are either used to describe the environment in which the game takes place or that are combined to depict the entity who you are supposed to represent in this game. For in Masquerade, all the characters are this supernatural entity, this entity that is so potent, whose identity is so beyond whatever realm this game takes place in that they cannot appear in the realm directly. And so the game is a game of shifting masks. Each layer of mask overlaying the mask prior, kind of like uh, translucent pieces of paper with shapes cut out of them being shifted and moved over each other to form uh, so that you can see this individual as being more of a composition of layers that are all changing at different rates rather than as some sort of static entity. One of the more visible layers of an individual are what that individual does. In this game, what that individual does are spells, and those spells are musically named, and they all uh, have a hand, a glowing hand involved in them doing the same thing. Um, although the hand does the same thing, the spells do different things depending on when they are played, they are also used to pay for each other. So if you're going to use a one spell, you have to discard another spell in order to do the one spell. Whereas a zero spell, you don't have to discard a spell to do the zero spell. A three spell, you have to discard three cards to do the three spell. All the spells you discard, regardless of the number, are going to have a glowing hand. The spells in and of themselves are not much of a measure of the individual who uses them. Uh, all the individuals in this game, all of the entities have access to these spells. It, I think it's more along the lines of, of uh, more everyday things like um, uh, eating food or drinking water or um, going to the bathroom. It's not really so much whether or not you do those things, but it's how you do those things and how much you do those things. Some are able to do it more than others. Um, another layer then that's maybe a little more uh, unique to each individual, at least within a given turn, is position. And here we have the five different positions uh, a, an entity can take in a given turn. Um, and these are exclusive. If one entity is meditating, Another entity can't be meditating in the same turn. They, they could be watching them meditate, however, and guarding, being on guard for that meditation, or rumbling, um, or, of course, leading. Similar to position for the individual is place. Each turn, uh, the entities will decide which place that they are going to be, and where they are decides, defines in some, some senses what they're going to be doing, which in that point in time decides who they are. And who they are on the outside is determined by these dancers, which are a lot more interesting to look at than the spell hand cards. Each of the dancers is a, is a representation of that entity uh, for perhaps the whole game, but maybe not necessarily so. It is, it is possible to change dancers, uh, change kind of your persona in the world even after you've begun life. So on a turn then, an entity will take their dancer and they will decide where they were going to go and where they go decides what they're going to try to do and what they're going to try to do decides whether they get points or not, how they get those points and um, whether they are just buttressing themselves for later. How, there's a lot of different ways to get points. You get points by getting stuff from um, these guardians. The stuff's kind of like the, the glowing hand spells. Uh, you can get points by um, receiving these kind of titles, these, these awards for being great. You can get points by beating other people up. You can get points by casting a certain spell. There's a lot of different ways to get points in this game.
perhaps how you choose to get points is a pretty decent measure of what that entity actually is, uh, where your points came from when the game ends. But there's a final layer beyond that even that uh, I think is probably the closest to the core of the entity that the game is going to offer, and that is the, the mask, the kind of the namesake of the game. So you, you can start, and these are, these are hidden, so you would start with your card like this, uh, with a mask of anger, of, aggress of aggression, of weeping, of composure, of delight, and of desire. You could have one of those six masks, and each of those masks is supposed to um, dictate maybe closer to the core of the entity who you represent. Uh, and what that means is if you, each mask gives you a secret way that you can score points. Now why would you reveal your mask? Why would you reveal this kind of closely guarded part of yourself? Well you get some sort of power blast uh, when, you, when you reveal your mask and that's why you would show uh, something akin to your true self. But then when that's done and the mask is still showing, you've revealed yourself but you've revealed a mask, what's beyond that? And maybe that's the question that the game is trying to get at. Are you someone who gets your points if there are no cards left in the Guardian deck? Or are you someone who gets their points if you have the emblem of the sword? What kind of person are you? Who is the you that you are? And if you change how you get points uh, in, in the game, are you still the same person who started the game or not? I like that this game raises those questions. I like the box it comes in. I like uh, for, a, for a very point game, it's a very pointy game. It's very much about points and coming up with ways to score points and figuring out the, the best way to score points. It, it, has a, um, it has an interesting world to kind of dwell in and peek at while you're in that sort of mathematical exercise. And that's why I want to say masquerade.